So if you're trying to go out, if you're an entrepreneur and you want new clients, spend more time connecting with people, connecting with your target audience than you do posting content right now. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for tuning in and for showing up. We appreciate you. We have another guest this week, a journey and lots of advice to share. So let's get right to the topic. It is the business professional, the personal brand and the business network. How do you stand out on a business platform? Well, I have got the best guest to talk about this. Joining me on the show is Mandy McEwen. And Mandy is the CEO and founder of Mod Girl Marketing. And she's also a LinkedIn thought leadership consultant. Mandy has been building influential personal brands with high performing business leaders and their teams. And she's been doing this for over a decade. And I could say a lot about Mandy, but I think it's best that she joins the conversation and she shares her story and advice with you. Mandy, welcome to Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Me too. So I want to dive right in. Um, of course, let's tell everybody a little bit about how you got to personal branding and especially becoming a LinkedIn thought leadership consultant. Yes. Good loaded question. So mm -hmm. I will make it short. <laughs> yeah, right. So, no, exactly. So I started my agency back in 2010 and we were actually a full service agency. Um, before that I was, I was working in sales and I've always been kind of a computer nerd. So long story short on how I started my agency, I saw a need when I was working for other business owners. I knew I taught myself SEO and, and web design, all those fun things. I was an affiliate marketer. Oh, I sent out great. emails to small business owners asking if they wanted their website ranked on page one of Google for free. Once they, once they said, yes, I got them ranked for free. They would pay me $500, whopping $500. And then I would sell them on other things like web design. And that's how I got my first couple of clients. And then they started telling people and they started telling people. And then that's how I built Monroe. Right. So it was kind of a random, like, I'm not making enough money selling other people's products online. Let me see what I can do with business owners. And bam, that, that's how it happened. So this was in Kansas city back in 2010. So we molded into kind of a full service agency. Um, back then, SEO, you could get away with just doing SEO, right? right. Before like social media took over the world. Um, <laughs> so then it was like, okay, we can't really get away with that anymore. So we got to leverage social media, right? And I'd always been big on blogging anyway. Um, and I'll get into this a little bit later on, on kind of how I got into this personal brand journey to begin with and kind of my story on that front, um, challenge wise and, and how it led me here. But we started leveraging all the, all the channels, right? And so we started getting clients from all over, um, referrals, we worked with other agencies. And so that kind of molded into us being this full service agency that worked with a lot of healthcare clients, tech clients. And then uh, once I saw the power of LinkedIn, I started doing more LinkedIn. I actually had a really successful course back in 2017 well, I was still kind of doing other things with my agency. And then just in the past year or so, we really were like, let's hone in just on LinkedIn. There is such a massive opportunity here right now. And I want to give it our focus, right? So we've been doing it for a decade, but we were doing lots of other things too, right? SEO, PPC, Facebook, you know, all of it. And while we still do some of that for our clients, uh, you know, within the last 12 months, we, we decided there's a massive opportunity here, especially with the way things are now and more people being online. Let's hone in on LinkedIn. We're good at it. We love it. We have the authority. We have the credibility. And there's not enough people helping professionals and companies right. doing this, right? And so that's why we decided to go all in on it. And we are, we're super excited about, you know, kind of this journey ahead of us. It's already proven to be amazing and there's just so much more opportunity. So we're really excited to, to see what happens this year. Yes. Yeah, so there is so much opportunity on LinkedIn. I mean, it is the biggest professional network out there. 100%. That's number one. But I still get this feeling that a lot of business professionals think that just because they build their profile that that is enough. <laughs> and yep. we know that there's so much that you have to do on these platforms to get recognized, to have the algorithms work with you. So maybe you can just share a little bit about what works on LinkedIn. What are some tips? Yes. That road? 
Good question. Loaded question again. So let's, let's keep it to the basics, right? So the first thing is your profile. Okay. This is like your website, right? This mm -hmm. is your new business card. Like you're not going to business cards are not a huge deal anymore, right? Websites right. are kind of a pain to build. So think of your LinkedIn profile, not as your resume, but as your website. And you always want to think of the end user in mind. It's not about you. It's about them. Right. So of course you want people to trust you. And obviously you have to talk about yourself a little bit, but it has to relate to how you help people. Right. It's not just, Oh, look at me. I'm so great. I accomplished all these great things. I'm exactly. Amazing, right. No, you want, okay. Yeah. It's you never about things. us. Exactly. It's always about the people you serve. 100%. And that's the big, the number one mistake I see people making is it's, you know, it's just all about them or they don't fill out their profile properly. Right. So headline is important make your headline say exactly what you do and who you help, right? Your about section, fill it all out, maximize the character space, add featured media. I mean, we could go on and on, but the most, the most important thing to begin with is your profile. Right. Um, and people just neglect that. I actually have a free LinkedIn profile checklist. That's super handy. If you all want to check that out. It'll oh, where you. can people find that? That's really good. Yeah, it's on, you can go to our website. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a link you can give to people. Oh, terrific. Better. Okay. So yeah. it'll be in the show notes. Yes, for sure. And then the next thing is people, and this kind of relates to your profile too, but people overthink, um, everything first of all, <laughs> but especially yeah. when it comes to LinkedIn and what to say. And the best tip I have there is be yourself and talk about you and your experiences because there's only one of you and there's only one of me, right? And we all have unique experiences and that's what makes us stand out. So if you're just regurgitating the same information over and over again, that you're not going to stand out, right? Um, a general rule is if you can Google it, then don't post it, right? Yeah. And I, I yeah, say no, that. I, I work with the media, Mandy, and yeah. basically whenever we put experts on shows, and there's topics, they always say, if this is Google, if you can Google it, then we don't want it. <laughs> it, it has to have that sense of originality. 100%. And that's the thing. It's like you, there's only one of you and you have unique experiences. So why are you not sharing that? Right. And be, don't be afraid to be vulnerable and get real. You don't have to get super personal, but people relate to human stories, right? They don't relate to lame stock photos and click on this link to download my latest ebook, right? Like they want a story behind it. And so yes. storytelling is huge on LinkedIn too. And you can actually weave that into your content and to your profile. Now I want to ask something because I've been hearing a professional say, well, you know, if you're not on LinkedIn live, then you're not going to get recognized as the people who are doing that. Is that true? That's not true. I am on LinkedIn Live and I love it, but that's not true. Definitely not. Um, you just need to, I mean, you need to put yourself out there. Just do anything, yes. right? But videos, native videos alone that you upload to the platform are incredibly powerful. So I don't feel like that's true at all. Like LinkedIn Live is a neat feature. Um, but here's the thing too. It's like, it also depends on your target market who you're going after. So yes entrepreneurs like us, like we might probably be more active on LinkedIn during the day than let's say an executive working 60 hours a week with the family. And you know what I mean? Right. So it's yeah. like, no, it's That's not great. great. Point. Yeah. It's not, it's not, oh my gosh, amazing for every single person. Right. And so for me, my target audience is those really busy entrepreneurs and professionals. And so I actually cut back my LinkedIn lives from once a week to once a month. And it's because you have to know your audience and what they're, what they're doing, what they're consuming, you know? So my answer is, I do. I like LinkedIn Live. I think it's powerful, but I don't think by any stretch of the imagination, you have to have it to do big things on LinkedIn. That's really good to know. So maybe you could share, um, what do you think challenges people the most when it comes to whether it's a LinkedIn as a platform or any other platform? Why, why don't they do more? Why don't they try more? You, you said you rolled up your sleeves right away and really dug into it was SEO and the things that you were doing. What stops people? I think it's honestly, they don't know where to start. And I actually just made a video for our new brand. And that's what I said. I was like, most clients ask me, where do I start? And so they have no clue what to start and what to prioritize because you go to these social networks. It's like, oh man, there's a little overwhelming. Yeah. It's like, what do I do? Do I spend time connecting with people? Do I spend time posting content? Do I have to his profile? You know, and the answer is like, you do all of that. But the thing is what stops people is that overwhelming fear of, I have no idea what I'm doing. And so they don't even know where to start. And that's why they don't start. And that's why we exist is to help people. 
it started, right? Like that's exactly why we do what we do is because it is overwhelming. I mean, it's not for us because we've been doing it for a decade, right? But, and it's changing, stuff's changing all the time. But I think the biggest thing is, you know, people again are overthinking it and they, they, the content piece is really a big reason people don't kind of fully embrace it. And I like to tell people too, it all depends on your goals. So if you're trying to go out, if you're an entrepreneur and you want new clients, spend more time connecting with people, connecting with your target audience than you do posting content right now. You know, if you're trying to just build your personal brand, like if you're a professional and you really want to, you know, build your authority in the space, yeah, you need to focus on posting quality content and getting that content out there while connecting with new people. But not everyone uses LinkedIn the same way and they shouldn't use LinkedIn the same way. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I mean, as marketers, we think about this overall marketing program and how our communication reaches higher level business goals. But every single platform you're on, you have to know why you're there. And that why working toward those goals and just like what you said, is it about content and, and the brand or is it about trying to get new business that has you doing different tactics and, and taking different strategies as well? Yeah, exactly. And I always tell people too, you always have to start with your why, like you just said it, but like, what is your overall purpose? Like, what's your professional passion? What do you feel like you were put on this earth to do? Right? Like, you need to know that before you start any marketing. I don't care if it's LinkedIn or blogging or Facebook or whatever it is. Like you have to be clear on that. And so if you're not, you're going to be even more overwhelmed, right? But when you have that clarity of what do you want to be known for, right? Like what is your professional passion? What do you want to be known for and build your influence around? It makes things a heck of a lot easier when you're actually going and implementing these strategies. That is so true. So you found your clarity. You were doing your thing, helping influential personal brands, building them and also really targeting in on LinkedIn, maybe share what's your greatest success and maybe share also a challenge. Yes. So these go one in the same, actually. Um, so they go hand in hand. And this is exactly why I, it led me down this, this personal branding path. So my biggest challenge back in the day as a young, you know, 23 year old uh, female in a very male dominated space, especially mm-hmm. back then, right? That was a massive challenge for me. So, you know, I've only been out of college a couple of years and everyone I'm, that I know is a dude that does SEO and web design. <laughs> like, I don't know any females at the time that did this. And so I'm in Kansas city and I'm networking. Kansas city is a, a great place to, to start a business by the way. Um, and it, it took, a, it took a while for people to trust me. Right. Um, person to in face, of course, person to person was easier than on, online, but I'm trying to grow a national global brand here. Right. So I started in Kansas city, still took a while to get people to, to trust me and notice me. So what I did is I started blogging right away. Right. Because I thought I'm going to have to work my ass off 10 times harder than my male counterparts to get people to trust me as this young female. Right. So I'm just going to prove to them that I know my stuff and what a better way to do that than to actually practice what I preach, right? I'm going to do for myself what I'm doing for clients. So I started SEO friendly blogging. I started ranking on page and one of Google for all these terms. I started um, getting big on social media, on Twitter specifically, Um, started leveraging influencers. So connecting with other influencers, getting on their guest blog. So I, I did this not knowing it was personal branding at the time. I had no clue that it was You're personal. Just branding, walking right? the talk. You're exactly. Right? I felt like I didn't have a choice. Like if I want to make this a real thing, like if I want to actually grow this business and not have to go back to a nine to five, like I don't have a choice. Like I have to show people my stuff. Right. So that's probably the biggest challenge that I, that I had was just getting people to trust me as a young female. Right. And so that helped me tremendously by saying like, you can compare me to this guy over here all day long. Look what I've done. Look at my rankings. Look yes, at my social media. Look at his. Yep. You know? And so it's like, bam, that worked, you know? So unknowingly, I've been building my personal brand since 2010. Okay. Not even knowing really. And so that's led to so many opportunities for me. Um, big press opportunities of uh, collaborating with LinkedIn's own marketing team, being invited to those things. I mean, I could go on and on, right? Big clients, uh, JV partners, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of what led me into um, where we're at now is because I see the power in it. Right. So that's your first question. Uh, Second question is the, was what was the most success in the challenge? Yes. 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 So the success part is I have literally tried every way to monetize online that you can think of. Right. So I started off with affiliate marketing and I started flipping websites and I started selling. I've done Amazon, like I've done everything. And then a few years ago, 
I drank the Kool-Aid on wanting to be a course creator, right? I wanted to have my own programs, my courses for agencies. So I did that. And so I have courses out there and I kind of, the, the entrepreneur ADD is real for me. Um, not now, <laughs> not what it has been over the past decade. So I, and this has kind of been a challenge too, is like, I want to do it all, right? FOMO is real, especially with entrepreneurs. Right. I want my own course. I want my own programs. I want my own Facebook group. I want this, I want that. And so going back to the success I've done, I have zero FOMO anymore. I've done everything I've wanted to do to make money online. And I've leveraged these different ways and then found, okay, this is what I like best. I've done everything. I've sold every service, offered every digital marketing advertising service you can think of. I've sold my own, you know, products. I've sold other people's products. I've sold, I, you name it. And so now I'm to this point where I'm like, okay, this is awesome. Okay. I have no more FOMO. Calm down, Mandy. Focus. Right. Now, what I do I love the most exactly. that I'm going to do? And that's exactly where I'm at now. And so I feel like doing all of those things has led me to this point where I know exactly what path I'm on now and where I want to go. And I'm, I'm super excited about that. And, okay, and not so to mention, I guess one more thing is I've never, this has all been myself. I've never had funding or a partner or anything. It's just me as a solo digital agency owner and then my uh, freelancers that I hire. So that's another part of it too, is I've done everything 100% on my own. Well, congratulations. So to uh, two follow-up questions. First, what would you share with Women Worldwide about getting rid of FOMO? And second, with everything that, I mean, let's face it, there's a lot going on and you've had a lot of success and yes, there's challenge. How do you manage to stay focused to get to that clarity? So how do you get rid of the FOMO and talk a little bit about the clarity? Yes. So how you get rid of FOMO is by focus, right? (laughs) First and foremost is like, what do you really want to do? We're going back to your purpose and passion, right? Like, what do you really want to do? And don't compare yourself to other people. That's my biggest, the biggest mistake I made. That's a downfall. I think yep. there's way too much comparison and exactly. um, this feeling of competition when there's plenty for everybody. There really is. No, you were so right. You were so right. And that's, that's kind of what led me to my massive FOMO was comparing myself to other people that were nothing. It, it, it was dumb. It made no sense. Right. So right. don't compare yourself to other people. Like we are all so unique in our own ways, just because someone does something similar to you, it does not mean that you should even remotely compare yourself to them because we're all on different journeys. Right. So what's helped me a lot with FOMO is meditation too. So once you're focused, yeah. you know, and you're clearing yeah. your goals, meditate, like just it's, it's, it's hard, but it's easy, right? It's hard for us to slow down and take the time to just meditate, let things come to you. Right. I mean, that's the biggest thing for me that has helped so much with focus is so once you understand your goals and what you're trying to do, take them up 10 minutes every morning is what I do. And then I try to do it at night too, when I can, but having that routine and just slow things down and let your mind clear. I mean, that is such a massive uh, advantage over people who don't, especially when you're just like starting out and trying to get things going. When I meditate, Mandy, everything's so easy. Right. Things just come to me yes. I meditate every morning and every single night. And the day is just easy and fun. <laughs> I agree and 100%. Too. Yes. Yep. And I just started that with like in the last 12 months, I would say. Um, and I think it's made a massive difference, but I'm like, I can't even imagine if I would have been doing that, you know, this entire time, because we just get so caught up in things and we're just bouncing around and you can't even see what's right in front of us most of the time. Yeah. And there's always something new. There's always something going on that can, you know, the messages that we're bombarded with my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. You have to overwhelming, (laughs) you know? So yes, meditate and just stay focused on what your end goal is. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? Do you really ask yourself, do you really need to do this? You know, is this really going to help move me in the right direction or is it going to be a distraction? And most things are a distraction. So you have to always ask yourself that before you start down a path. Is this a distraction or is this going to lead me to my end goal? Exactly. What about stress? So does the meditation take away all stress? Yeah, it does for me. Exercise, exercise and meditation are one way to get rid of and being outside. I'm an outdoors person. That's why I love California and why we moved here from Kansas because we can pretty much be outside 24 seven all year long. Right. So right. me being, having the sunshine on my face, being outside, exercising and meditation are how I deal with stress. Oh, I think that's fantastic. Well, you, you certainly, you have so much energy, positive energy. It, it shows <laughs> that you're meditating. So maybe um, you could just share quickly Is there any lesson or aha moment that has 
guided you or really something that you learned from somebody else that you took forward over all these years? Yeah, that's a really good question. Yes, there is actually. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm, Number one thing. I feel like females, especially, we are often scared to ask people for help and to reach out. So there are more nice people in the world than there are not nice people, right? And it is amazing what reaching out to people who are where you want to be or even further along, it's amazing what they can do for you with just a simple response, right? So when I was starting my business, I leveraged people who were willing to help me. I leveraged these, these males that were, you know, twice my age that had successful agencies. And I wouldn't be where I was today if it wasn't for those amazing male mentors that I had, right? And it's because I wasn't afraid to reach out. Exactly, exactly. And so my thing is, don't be afraid to reach out to influencers, right? So I talk about this all the time. If you want to get, if you want to get noticed on LinkedIn too, you need to be networking with the people who are getting noticed, right? Yeah, that's who Ask you them. your brand to. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. So don't be afraid to reach out to people, ask a simple question, ask for help, ask to get on the phone with people, especially people who are further along than you. I would say that's probably the most, you know, impactful advice I've ever received because you have to surround yourself with, with smart, positive people, especially people that are, you know, smarter than you, right? You always, you don't want to be the smartest one in the room, right? And now that we have no physical rooms here, it's like the internet is like, this is where you go. Like it, the world is your oyster here. You can, you can do whatever you want with, with the internet and especially LinkedIn. And it's a great place not to only build your personal brand with, with content, but connect with the right people. So don't be afraid to reach out to people that you feel like are unreachable, right? Cause they're too big or, you know, too, too important. Um, no one ever is. And so instead of following people, you know, so on LinkedIn, you can follow or connect with them. People that have lots of followers, they have the follow button first, right. but if there's these three buttons and if you click that, you can actually click connect and you can send them a custom message. Oh, that's so I tell cool. people do that all the time. So unless it's someone like Gary Vee, someone that has like a million followers, like yeah. probably they're probably not going to do it. Right. But I'm talking it most, the majority of people who aren't massive influencers, if you send them a custom connect to request message and you say something nice about them and it's customized and you can tell that it wasn't just a bot, most likely they're going to connect with you. So always try to click, click that connect button instead of the follow button to connect with the right types of, of thought leaders in your industry and get the conversation going. This is so good for everybody to know. Excellent. You've been giving a lot of advice and now I'm going to ask you to give that parting advice. I can't believe how quickly this conversation went, but maybe you could just share with the Women Worldwide Network party advice on the personal brand and really getting yourself out there like on LinkedIn or or anywhere. Yes, for sure. So I would say write down your story. Okay. So this is, this is my number one tip and this, this goes with personal branding and really any network. Um, LinkedIn obviously is where where we focus and it works really well on LinkedIn. But once you have your your purpose, your clarity, you know, what you're trying to build your influence around, I want you to jot down your story. So what I mean by that is how did you get to this point and where you're at? Like what aha moments that we've been talking about led you to where you're at? What challenges led you to where you are today? Right. And you want to take that story and you want to try to weave that into content. So weave it into your profile, weave it into your content. And I want you to never forget you as a human being and your unique traits and personalities and experiences when you're writing your content, because that's what people want to see. So the more authentic and the more real you are, the more success you're going to have. And so it all starts with that story. So first your purpose, write down your story and everything you do needs to come from that place of you as a unique human being, not, oh, this is just some random tip that anyone else can share, right? And so that's that's my biggest thing for people. And that's why, you know, the difference between someone who is killing it with their personal brand and, and succeeding like crazy on LinkedIn and people who are spinning their wheels and just trying so hard is they, they're they afraid to let their inner, you know, human yeah, being wrong. out. That exactly. Exactly. And people love that. And they, they crave that, especially now that we don't have our, you know, human to human face to face interaction, like like we have been for years. And so it's, it's more important than now than ever. So that's probably my, my best parting tip for people to build a personal brand. um, And especially leverage LinkedIn is to really tell your story, showcase you, your unique experiences, what you've learned over the years, any setbacks, any challenges, and you know, what you're continuing to learn and share that with people. Because that's what, that's what sells. And I don't mean, you know, actually exchanging something. I mean, selling yourself, whether you're actually selling a product or a service, or you're just selling yourself as a, as a professional trying to, you know, increase your opportunities. 
Excellent advice, Mandy. That's awesome. Okay, last question, super easy. Where can people find out more about you and your work? Yes, so modgirlmarketing.com is a good start and then connect with me on LinkedIn. So mention that you, <laughs> of course. right? Mention that you saw this and you saw me here and send me a connection request on LinkedIn, Just type in my name. I'm easy to find and I would say those are probably the best places. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing your journey, challenges, success, and all the great advice. Really appreciate it. Yes. Thanks so much for having me. I had fun. You're welcome. Me too. And thank you to all of you out there who are watching. We appreciate you showing up and for keeping the conversations going and for sharing your feedback about the show. And if you want to get updates every single week, go to the Women Worldwide website. It's womenworldwideshow.com. And until our next episode, friends, be well, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered. Thank you.